always use the example of you're a family and you're having your first child and you live in an apartment and you have now outgrown that apartment. So you need to look for a home. And when you look for that home, you need to look for extra bedrooms and maybe a yard and, and places that your family can grow. So you find a home that may be $150,000 and it has that room, so you buy it. You could also buy the house that's a million dollars and be in debt the rest of your life. That's how government works in Connecticut. They buy the million dollar house? Yes, every year. So um, I understand what you're saying about you, you, the Republican leadership and the Republican people that you lead, put together your own budget and you submitted it. Okay? That's also been true for the last couple of years, I think, the last couple of rounds of the budget, mm -hmm. but either by literally totally ignoring the Republican Party or the budget and or the budget that you present, you're essentially back to the same place that you always were before. What I'm talking about is we've had this legislature now, democratically controlled legislature, I think for the better part of the last three decades. It's been a long time. Yeah, maybe even longer than that. Circuit the income tax at least, right? So what, what are you going to do? I, I just have a very, very difficult time understanding what's really hard for the public to understand about you can't spend more than you take in. So that always leads me to messaging. How do you capture their attention to make them make a change? And by the way, let me clarify my point. I would feel the same way if the legislation was the same for 40 years with just Republicans. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to actually make the change? Well, you get the, the message out as best you can. And, and to answer your question that we've done this before, we have done this before, and I've been proud of every budget we've put out. But I have to say I'm the most proud of this one because not only did we come out with a budget that didn't raise taxes, but we made those structural changes that we're talking about. It's not just putting a Band-Aid on it. It's not saying let's just cut what's going on. And it's going out to every one of our towns and going around the state and having people understand it. But I have to tell you, the Democrats in this state, in the legislature, and the governor have made that job much easier for us this year because they put together a budget for the second time in a row that has over $2 billion of tax increases. Mm -hmm. And people cannot take it anymore. Businesses can't take it. Middle class can't take it. I have never heard in my 16 years the, the amount of people, your average person at the coffee shop, at the gym, at the dry cleaner, at your school, everywhere you go, that understand what's going on. And I've never heard that before. I've Femis, never heard people get it before. Femis, excuse me. I agree with you 100%. I'm one of those people. I'm out there as much as anybody else is, in business and every other way, right? We went through this four years ago. I'm, I'm not mad at you. We went through this four years ago, Themis, right? Right. $2 billion in tax increases four years ago. Here we are, four years later, $2 billion in tax increases in the Office of Fiscal Analysis, the office you cited before, is saying, boys and girls, get ready, because after this two years is over, this thing does nothing to prevent another $2 billion two years from now. The so what's of changed? Is, four years ago, the Office of Fiscal Analysis and every financial group in the country said the same thing. Right. So the, the thing that has changed this year, I would say, is there are 64 House Republicans in the mm -hmm. Connecticut House of <laughs> Representatives which is the most there's been in 20 years. So now... What's the number you need? We need 76 for a majority. So you got to pick up another 12. Yes, and there were 11 Democrats that voted against this budget. And That's the good. vote was 73-70, which is by far the closest vote I've ever seen. There, there was arm close. twisting, there was threatening, there was everything you can imagine going on. And I have to tell you, that vote was a bad vote, and I want to make sure, and I will do whatever I can to make sure that every person in this state understands what their legislator is voting for. Because as bad as people feel about the governor, because he's saying he will not veto this budget, it is the legislature. It is the legislature to, that has the control over the budget. And when the governor put out his budget, and the Democrats put out their budget, and we put out ours, it was the Democrats' budget that had the $2 billion of tax increases, mm -hmm. not the governor's and not ours. And that's the one that we so just the voted bottom on. line, the bottom line is this, that unless the, all the people and I agree with you, there's a lot of anger out there, right? All the people who are angry, what makes you think they're going to vote? Because I saw the tides turning last November when we took 10, 11 new seats in the legislature. I think that was the beginning of the last eight years of what you're saying. Every year we put a budget 
it doesn't pass. They don't take our ideas into consideration. We go back and forth, back and forth in the past now five years with a Democrat governor. I think people are starting to pay attention. And I noticed that for the first time this November, or else we wouldn't have gained 10 seats. Mm -hmm. And I think people <clears throat> just can't take it anymore. I, there, there, there is a breaking point to everybody, mm -hmm. and I am shocked that ours took this long, but I think this is it. Whether it's businesses or the middle class, it's an equal opportunity budget that's bad. Well, I'm glad the businesses finally woke up. It's about time so they I. started playing hardball. We got a CBIA, which has got 10,000 members, and under the leadership currently of Joe Brennan and Donna Galuzzo, they woke that organization up and for the first time in years started playing hardball. Good for them. But the people who are angry have to change that legislature. You know, I read an article the other day in the paper. In fact, it was two days ago, Themis, right? And some members of the legislature on the Democratic side and the um, employee state coalition, their answer to this situation, because the governor's looking to cut like $200 million to satisfy and eliminate some business taxes, right? Their answer to that was, why do you want to cut expenses? Why don't you just raise another $250 million from the wealthiest people in the state of Connecticut? They can do it. Now, where's the learning in that? Well, that's always the excuse, and, and it's always about rich people, however we define them, which, interestingly enough, is on a sliding scale every year right. as to what's rich and what's not. Yeah. Um, certainly, the more you make, the more you pay. That's what, how our income tax works. But to, to then say at, at the top of that, whether it's wealthy <laughs> people or whether it's businesses, now you should be punished and pay extra, whether it's a corporate surcharge or an extra charge on your income tax. That's the shame of it. The shame of it is state employee unions started out and other unions started out for all the right reasons they were employees being taken advantage of by business owners that should never happen but unfortunately that pendulum has has swung the in the, the other, other direction side. and what's happening now is you have people that can't afford to keep their homes and their cars and their kids in school etc and then there are people that have guaranteed jobs for four years and guaranteed pay increases now I have lots of friends who are state employees they're wonderful people but we need to cut somewhere, and it seems that that's never where, where we cut. You know, the governor gave pay increases, um, yeah, large pay it. increases in January and December, and I don't understand why everybody in society in the state of Connecticut asked by the governor shared sacrifice four years ago. Mm -hmm. If you share this sacrifice with me, and by that I mean you pay extra taxes, I will do things, I will streamline, I will consolidate, I will cut costs. One of those things I will do is I will find savings from the state employee unions. Not take things away from them that they are already promised, but find savings. One meeting in four years of that committee, they elected a chairman and then they adjourned the meeting. Never did any of it. Mm -hmm. Keep your promise. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the governor has not kept his promises and it's people are sick of it is mm -hmm. the thing. I think the, the dam has burst. I hope you're right. I honest to God hope you're right. All I know is we have the same governor reelected. And he's going to be there for four years. So, your me in my opinion, your messaging has got to be enormously strong. When I say your, I think it's, a comma it's, a, it's almost like a troika situation. It's the legislature, it's the Republican Party, and it's the business community. B because, once again, in my opinion, Themis, as long as the governor and the Democrats keep on winning the big cities, they're not going to win. It's that simple. You know, and then when we get when we is have that, that an oversimplification? No, it's not. I mean, but it's it's certainly a large piece of the puzzle. But the way we win cities, in my opinion, is not by passing legislation that that we think, as suburban legislators, are what the city cities want. We win cities by having mayors in cities like Aaron Stewart in New Britain. You know, like um, other mayors throughout the state. That's how we win cities. By having Republicans get elected in cities and running that city day in and day out so people say, hey, he or she's doing a good job. I think I like Republicans now. Even though everybody's told me my whole life they're bad, they're not so bad. They're doing a pretty good job. And that's how you win cities, by showing them, by from the ground up, not just going in there and, and, and becoming you know, what they think we want them to be.